We're going to go across to another relatively high over under Philadelphia at New England. We've got a 45 over under here. Again, no, very interesting in terms of the betting markets. 98% of the cash is currently going on the under. So we may see this over under drop as we get towards Sunday. Um, Tom, what are you most excited to see about this matchup? So the big key here is how much does the Patriots offense look functional? Last year, we saw them be such a mess at times. And, you know, the offensive coordinator last year is now a defensive assistant coordinator. He's not even a defensive coordinator somewhere. They didn't have a grown up in the room. They weren't able to function. They did nothing to help Mac Jones. But this year, you've got Bill O'Brien, who, for all Bill O'Brien's problems as a GM and head coach of the Texans, he was a very good offensive coordinator at times. The Texans frequently finished within sort of the top five offense when he was there. And he was good at what he did. Him and Mac Jones seem to have a decent relationship. I want to see what that passing game looks like, which one of these wide receivers stand up. Because while Juju Smith-Schuster has been the first wide receiver drafted all offseason, I'm not entirely sure that we can just give everything to Juju Smith-Schuster, particularly when there's all these reports out there about how his knee injury could be something that lingers and could curtail his NFL career in the next couple of years. Devante Parker on DraftKings, if you're looking to attack this and stack up the Eagles, which isn't something I'm overly in on because they're very expensive, like Jalen Hurts, 7,800, Dallas Goddard's 5,000, Devonta Smith, 7,200, AJ Brown, 7,600. Like that's an expensive offense to be stacking up in DraftKings and daily fantasy football. But if you're looking on the other side of the ball, Devontae Parker is 4100 and I think that's a reasonable price for a player who might end up just being the wide receiver one on this offense. So, yeah, I think obviously a lot of this game is going to come back to do the Patriots push the Eagles because last year, how many times did we see it got to the fourth quarter and the Eagles just didn't have to do anything? I think Jalen Hurts ended up ranking like last in total passes thrown in the fourth quarter because the Eagles just completely took their foot off the gas. But yeah, that kind of side of it is very interesting to me. I mean, I know you must be very interested in how the running back situation plays out. Yeah, I think it's... Like, I've, I've been a big proponent of Ramondre Stevenson all off-season. There's a, reports this week that Ezekiel is going to steal the goal line work and get more work, and we think, I'm not concerned. I'm riding Ramondre as, as long as I can. I think he's going to get the lion's share of the work. The two, I guess cheap people that I'm intrigued to see more from and find out a little bit more information about. Kenny Gainwell, first of all, you said he's 4.2k on, on DraftKings. If we believe the hype this offseason, he's the one that is going to get the lion's share of the work in this Eagles backfield. Whether that's such a backfield by committee that you don't want any part of it, maybe that's the case. But I'm intrigued to see, certainly from a dynasty perspective, how many snaps he's on the field for, and if that's a player we can invest in longer term. And then I guess the dart throw player, you talked about Juju's injury. We know there's Devontae Parker is the big bodied outside guy. Kendrick Bourne seems to be the forgotten man. Like I was such a believer in Kendrick Bourne's talent when he came across to New England from San Francisco. He seemed to get in Bill Belichick's doghouse and, and sort of had basically a wasted year last year. But Bill Belichick's been talking him up consistently all off-season. He's dirt cheap. He's probably on your dynasty waiver wires. If you're looking for a dart throw in DFS, if you're looking for an end-of-the-bench stash that could turn into something, I think Kendrick Bourne's game meshes really well with Mac Jones and is the kind of dart throw that, that could turn into something moving down the line. So Kendrick Bourne on DraftKings, he's 3,300. I kind of find that a difficult click this week simply because I think there's probably more value out there. Like Marvin Mims is 3,000 this week. I think it's one of those where, yeah, I, I definitely understand it. It could be very interesting how it plays out. I think what you talked about with the running back situation, Kenneth Gainwell at 4,200 is definitely interesting. If you believe the Eagles are going to go out and put you know, the Patriots in a situation where they have to come from behind and really counter and push the offense, then do we see more from Kenneth Gainwell? Or is it DeAndre Swift, who is out there just grinding runs out? Rashad Penny, who again is another player. I doubt anyone plays Rashad Penny this week, but 
he's healthy. And sometimes with these types of running backs, <laughs> it pays off to take a gamble on them early on in the season. Ultimately, yeah, it just comes back to how much the Patriots can stay in this game for me, really. And uh, I think it'll be... I have complete confidence in starting Ramondre Stevenson. I have complete confidence in starting any of the Eagles players who aren't running backs. But that's about it. <laughs>